Mr. King, first of all, can we just explain to our viewers who obviously are very disappointed that they couldn't watch the Open Day last night, what exactly, without getting too technical, what exactly went wrong? I think Gerard on radio this morning described it perfectly as, in his words, a perfect storm. And it was a combination of the most awful factors coming together at the same time. One of the, the major uh, influences on this is the fact that GBC, as I think everybody knows, is going through a major upgrade to digital broadcasting and to HD. So the equipment that would normally be available for some of the links we would use is being tied up for other things. There was then a problem uh, with a link which had been rigorously tested and was working perfectly to get the signal back from the OB site, the broadcasting house. Over a period of time, because that link is now digital, a build-up of errors within the digi digital data stream caused the link to fail. We've got uh, Television Systems Limited, TSL, major, major UK broadcasting company. They designed the BBC's uh, set up in Salford. They were working on it, our people were working on it. It just proved to be one of those awful, awful things that in the end couldn't be fixed. And I am so deeply sorry for everybody involved in Open Day, everybody who was sitting down at home waiting for a great evening's entertainment, which they will have tonight, by the way. Uh, but we are desperately sorry for what happened. The big problem, one of the major problems at GBC, every time, every single time we do an OB, I sit in terror because the risk factor is huge. But the surely then, Mr. King, given that, and given the whole series of circumstances that you've outlined with the, the, the transition to digital happening only this week, That's was right. it not uh, more prudent or would it not have been more prudent to have not gone live and to have perhaps recorded the show a day earlier and then screened it yesterday uh, uh, not, uh, not live. Perhaps delaying it by an hour. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, Stephen, as you know. Uh, the, the difficulty is... What yes, but surely you say that hindsight... No, 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 but let, let me just ask you okay. this. You say that hindsight is a wonderful thing, but surely um, the CEO, the CEO designate, management team, has to have foresight as well. Of course And you should have foresight. anticipated these problems. No, let me explain it. If you give me time to answer the question, it's a particularly pertinent one and very, very important. The, the point is that everybody in broadcasting, I've worked in broadcasting for 40 years, Everybody wants to do the very best job and get a live show on air. Uh, so you, you make a value judgment, and we were making that judgment with TSL, Gerard, John, our head of engineering, and up until the very last moment, very last moment, it appeared things would work, and that's what everybody wanted. It didn't. It's the most, most disappointing, because I know the importance of Open Day to Gibraltar. I've been coming to Gibraltar for nearly 10 years now. I understand the disappointment. Um, the, the option, the, uh, the alternative, is you say, no, we cannot do this. We can't do these live broadcasts. We will record. And then you, you spoil the product, which I would say 99% of the time, despite all the panic at the last minute, does actually work. Surely another alternative, apart from recording it, which is in effect what we're going to have to do today, we are. another alternative would also have been to have gone from the studio, and that would have minimised some of the problems that you outlined in your first that answer. It wasn't an alternative on this occasion, because you know as well as I do, if you put that, pop down into that studio now, we are recording this interview in my office, because the studio is out of commission while it's being upgraded. That simply wasn't an option this year. It might be in future years, but the much better studio was not an option this time around. We may be recording this interview here in, in, in your studio, in your office, as you say, but um, Newswatch went out last night, also with many problems associated with the, the difficulties that you uh, mentioned, but we have been recording other live programs there, so there's no reason, presumably, why the open day couldn't also have been done under controlled circumstances. Newswatch is a great program, but the demand on resources of Newswatch compared to Open Day. Open Day is a big production, actually, for any broadcaster. GBC, which is not the world's biggest broadcaster, but certainly has some of the world's best talent here, manages brilliantly. I think to have tried to do Open Day with the number of people concerned in the studio, particularly normally in the studio, I think, is not ideal. But particularly under the current circumstances, I think then we would have been pilloried for doing a, a really inferior job. Now, you might say with hindsight, better than nothing, but at least what we will have tonight at nine o'clock is a really great evening's entertainment. Tragic, it's delayed by 24 hours. 
Uh, I can only apologise. I'm deeply upset by that. But we will have something on and we are still making the money for the great causes. Well, I know that there was a recorded message earlier in the day which had been done in case there was a problem. I think it was to the effect that unfortunately we cannot bring you the Open Day Live but we will be bringing it to you in about an hour's time. That suggests to me and I suppose to most people that we knew there was a, at least a, a likelihood or a possibility that something might go wrong. Therefore, perhaps we shouldn't have run the risk. Well, whenever we do an outside broadcast, there is, I will be absolutely honest with you, there is a risk that makes me tremble in my boots because we have no redundancy. What that, what that means is if we have a link, say, from point X back to uh, Broadcasting House, that often has to go via point Y. If you haven't got line of sight, go from point X, point Y to Broadcasting House. There is no backup on those links. And if one of those happens to fail, then we are off the air. So there is a risk all the time, and we would certainly normally have a, a recorded message and a caption ready to put on screen for any programme, standard practice. So if it does go down, uh, or if you've got a delay, you can at least keep people informed. Can you imagine, Mr King, what would have happened in the BBC if, for argument's sake, on the Children in Need Day, which is really the equivalent of our Open Day, where they're raising funds for charity, if the message had gone up on BBC One saying, unfortunately, we cannot bring you children in need today. We'll record it and bring it to you tomorrow. Heads would roll, surely, wouldn't they? I think there is a very big difference. That is, the BBC doesn't suffer from 25 years of underinvestment. Right, so you don't think any heads need to roll Absolutely. on this occasion? I, I had uh, a meeting this morning looking at exactly what had gone wrong. And it was, as I said at the very beginning, a, a horrible combination of factors that led to what is, from my point of view, an absolute nightmare from any broadcaster's point so, of view. So do you, do you feel responsible in any way as a CEO for the fiasco I last night? I think everybody is responsible for everything that comes out of this uh, you, you are the boss, organization. You are the boss. Indeed. What I was trying to say was that having had the meeting and discussed what did go wrong and being aware of what led to it, it was actually unforeseeable. And had we had, uh, had we not had TSL from the UK in place, backing up what my people said, then I would have had to go into it with, with a slightly different uh, angle, if you like. But I have the backing of that, and I'm very aware that everything that could have been done had been done. And rather than castigating those people, there are many who I would praise for actually putting us in a position where we will have a wonderful show tonight. I think that the public at large may want to know exactly who was at fault, even though there are many circumstances that you've explained were at work yesterday, but people want to know who ultimately is responsible or whose fault it was. Is there going to be some sort of internal investigation and inquiry into what the circumstances were, or, or are you, as CEO, going to accept responsibility for it? I'm very well aware of what the circumstances were, and it was not a fault of any individual or individuals. It was a combination, uh, as I said before, of the major engineering works going on here, which will transform GBC, coupled with the live link which received interference from a transmitter nearby. That's actually what happened. Without well, going to great technical details, but I am very well aware of what happened, and there was no fault of an individual. How intimately involved were you with the, in the lead-up to to the open day because of course we know that you mentioned Gerard, Gerard Duma, he's a CEO designate and he's due to take over from you when you leave in a few months time. Was it a case perhaps of uh, Mr. Duma, uh, if you like, driving the ship forward and you had a, something of a backseat on this? I'm, as any CEO would be, I'm aware of everything that is happening but I'm not here to micromanage. We have a, a very experienced and skilled team who are exceptionally good at their jobs and uh, Gerard and, and the open day to Gerard, it's almost his baby. He's been involved with it for many years. And I can't imagine anybody who would have suffered the blow of this happening more than Gerard. Uh, he had been absolutely on top of everything in the lead up, uh, going back many months. There are months of planning for this sort of thing. Um, so, yes, we were all very well aware of what was happening. Uh, and it was absolutely at the last minute that the problems manifested themselves. Otherwise, everybody was not just ready to go, they were raring to go and looking uh, forward to it. I understand that you weren't actually on site yesterday at Bayside for, for the show, is that true? That is correct. Is there a reason why not? I mean, surely as a CEO, was it not your place to have been there? I usually visit the sites. Sometimes I will watch a programme or part of a programme at Broadcasting House. Sometimes I will watch a programme or part of a programme at home for a very simple reason. If you are on site, you do not see the finished product 
as the public is seeing it at the time. Gibraltar is a very small place. I can be from here to any part of Gibraltar very, very quickly. But this being Gibraltar's, if you like, flagship programme, the one that everybody looks forward to, is it not the place of the CEO to be present at that event? The CEO or the CEO designate, and Gerard was present. OK, and perhaps to end uh, on a more positive note, we have raised around £77,000 for charities so far. Money still coming in, so yeah. all is not lost. I think that this is an absolute accolade to the people of Gibraltar that despite the most important, most vital programme of the year being delayed by 24 hours, the money is still rolling in. And that I have to say thank you to everybody for.